All right, welcome everyone. We'll just give everyone a couple more seconds to finish logging in and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, well, hello everyone. This is D London and welcome to the Trimble Business Center Power Hour, where we talk about all things TBC and TBC related. During today's webinar, we'll be discussing and demonstrating Quantum, a route optimization technology brought to you by Trimble. We do have all attendees in listen only mode, but we welcome all questions and comments. So feel free to type them into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen and our reps will respond accordingly. With us today, we have Nick Fiferic, the CEC Software Regional Sales Specialist, and Adrian Patain, the Quantum CEC Regional Sales Manager. One of the common questions we face today is a conversation around cost versus value. Why change what is already working? Well, what if we could improve your existing workflow significantly? During today's webinar, our team will be demonstrating quantum and how it can be utilized to assist with hall road design, rapidly determining optimal alignments, and minimizing mass hall to significantly reduce construction costs, just to name a few. I would like to welcome Adrian Batain, who will be taking us further through the process. Adrian, thank you for joining us today. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay. You should have it. There we go. How are we looking? All good there? Yeah, we see you. Looking good. Okay, great. All right, we'll uh, we'll get into it. So, um, uh, thanks for the introductions, the uh, uh, London, and uh, and and the guys. So, essentially, you know, as as the London mentioned, one of the things you want to talk about today is the Trimble Quantum technology. Um, how and how essentially you can use it in conjunction with TBC. To, to really help optimize your whole road design. So the goal of this uh, power hour is to really discuss the system itself, uh, what it does, uh, and then we'll jump into the actual interface and show um, an actual whole road example. So um, one of the things we'll talk about are there are many different uh, applications of the technology. Uh, we'll touch on that too. Um, but fundamentally, the idea here is give you a better understanding of how the quantum technology can assist your workflows the key benefits of the tool, uh, and then the outputs that can actually assist with your uh, construction for whole roads. But again, like I said, it can be applied for to other types of, of technologies, uh, other types of projects. Um, if you've ever seen a Trimble presentation, you've potentially seen this connected construction slide. Um, one of the reasons we show this is because it does interconnect all of the Trimble technologies. And by that, I mean, we're starting off with a centralized 3D model that is effectively taken throughout the entire construction, entire construction life cycle. Uh, and that's really our vision. Uh, we're putting in the technologies in place to be able to do that and, and, you know, really end up with a digital twin of your entire project that is a intelligent as built. But back to where we started, and that's really up in the concept and design stage. And that's right up here where quantum is. And that's really what I would determine as the genesis of the 3D model. Again, you've probably heard a lot about 3D models and construction. Uh, quantum really very much is that, that very early stage and it can be utilized at creating a 3D model that can be taken throughout the entire process. Now, it can also be used later on down the project, down the, um, uh, project life cycle where you've got an alignment where you want to optimize it. And that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. And that's really picking an alignment. Um, where you can and better optimize its earthworks, or if you just want to start from scratch and generate very quickly an alignment to assist with your construction project. So what is quantum? Essentially, it's a route optimization tool for road and rail. Uh, it can be utilized from the very early pre-feasibility stage right up to the construction phase. Um, and I'm not sure why that's skipping. Whoops. Okay, so um, ultimately what the system is able to do is generate or what it's one of its primary goals is to generate three three dimensional alignments 
that are optimal based on key inputs that have their cost uh, reduced and then have their earthworks balanced as well. And like I said, they're the key elements that we're focusing on today uh, that the system can do when it's optimizing your uh, alignments for your particular road projects. So in order for the system to do that, um, we need to be able to have those key inputs in the system. In other words, um, we need to have the engineering input. So again, if we're focusing on a whole rate application, things such as your minimum horizontal radius, your maximum grades, crest and sag values, all of those inputs, because that's what it uses to optimize those alignments or generate alignments that are meeting those constraints. Uh, cost is a very big influencer here, of course. Uh, and again, that's one of the be best benefits of the system is that in that it's optimizing on cost. So if you're putting in a very high borrow cost, for instance, it will understand that and will try and determine alignments that are minimizing borrow. So you can certainly very, very much configure the system to de determine alignments that are in line with what you're, what you're looking for. Uh, environmental, of course, as well. So that's pretty important, even even for some of your haul roads, if you need to avoid areas, if you need to put areas that you need to minimize impacts on, that's one of the things you can plug into the system to ensure that the alignments are producing, uh, that the system is producing alignments that are uh, okay and in line with what you're expect expecting. So as far as different applications, um, you know, one of the very early applications of the system was corridor and alignment optimization. So and it could, it's still very much used for those types of applications. And that's where it's essentially creating a three-dimensional alignment over very large areas. But the same methodology and same approach can be used for your haul roads. In other words, in rugged terrain or areas where you've got an earthworks imbalance, where you need to modify an existing uh, design or where you may only have a 2D conceptual alignment and a, and a cost per mile. This is where the system can help significantly because you're using a lot more intelligence to help determine your alignments. And you may you know, be able to use that 2D conceptual alignment that you have, uh, generate a three-dimensional alignment and then apply all of the geometry to it and then optimize it all at the same time. That's one of the key aspects of the system. So as far as the value engineering and bidding, now this is one of the, the elements where we're getting a little bit closer to the whole road applications. By that, we can actually bring in an existing alignment. So if you've got an alignment uh, that you've you know, done some work on, you can drop it into the system. It will cost it straight away. It will give you an output. It will give you your earthworks. It calculates your templates. Uh, it calculates your um, costs, all of those things um, based on the alignment and then optimizes it based on the geometric criteria or the engineering criteria that you've thrown into the system. You can then actually go and modify it very manually as well. So you can do some your mind, your very fine tuning adjustments uh, and then be able to get the cost impacts of those literally on the fly. So there's a huge benefit in that, as you can imagine, by being able to manually adjust, <coughs> manually adjust an alignment and it's a full geometric alignment and then be able to see the cost straight away versus having to go and plug it into your system and then you know maybe get an answer uh, two hours later. The system will actually very quickly give you, get you an alignment, optimize it, and then give you the option to be able to manually adjust that as well. So one of the things that are important with mass, with, sorry, with hall roads, of course, is your mass hall. So the system creates a mass hall profile uh, and it is very highly configurable as well. So in other words, we can put in borrow pits, we can put in dump sites, uh, and that will actually influence alignment placement. So when we get into the actual hall road example, we'll see precisely where we've done that because the system can consider that as part of its analysis. In other words, if it's moving it into an area and it needs material for fill, uh, if it sees a borrow pit, then it will, that is nearer to, a, to the location and it's cost effective to use that borrow pit, then it will do so. And the best part is it does create that mass hall profile. If you're familiar with Trimble Business Center um, corridor mass hall, that's actually derivative of the, of the quantum technology. And that's where you can actually then do a next level detailed analysis of that alignment within Business Center to actually then include your equipment, your um, movement of material, your haul distances, all of those things. But quantum will get you maybe 80 to 90 percent of, of the location done, or at least the mass hall profile done as part of that analysis. And like I said, the best part is that it's as it's analyzing that area, it is it is analyzing or 
considering where it's moving material. So instead of looking at spreadsheets, instead of trying to figure out where my material is coming and going, the system's actually doing that for you. So as you can understand, it's doing a lot of heavy lifting with the calculations and that is influencing alignment placement as well. That does apply to bridges and, and, um, and structures like that as well, because obviously the shorter the bridge, the cheaper the cost, uh, the angle of the bridge as it's crossing a feature can, will, will also influence alignment placement and cost too. So where to use the technology? So we've kind of touched on the early stage applications, so the scoping and pre-feasibility right up to preliminary design. Uh, but what we're kind of focusing on here is at the value engineering side. And, and that's where, again, you may be able to have an alignment. You may have an alignment where you can fix, where you can move it within an existing right of way. Or alternatively, you've got a whole road that you want to design within your right of way. That's where we're focusing on today. And that's where the system can actually be utilized to optimize those alignments. But as you can see here, it can be applied right throughout the construction life cycle. Uh, except for your design tools. And it is designed to be complementary to your Bentley Open Roads or your, micro, or your Autodesk Civil 3D. The idea is you can do your bulk analysis within those, within Quantum, bring it into those design tools, make your minor adjustments, and then you could actually bring it back into the, into the technology to cost it. So it has a very strong cost estimating tool um, or cost estimating benefit as part of the technology itself. So what we're going to do here is just quickly touch on the the core inputs and um, see what it you know see what goes into a system or, or a project. The good thing is that you don't need to have everything. You just need to have the key drivers that that would in, be influencing your alignment placement. And for a haul rate, as you'll see in a second, it's really not a huge amount. Uh, in this case, we're just literally interested in your digital terrain model. Uh, your physical constraints. Now that, that's going to be your GIS data. And that really is the next one, which is your environmentally sensitive sites too. So that's the spatial data. That could be avoidance areas. That could be areas you need to minimize impacts on or simply areas that you need to apply an additional cost to. Uh, the engineering and design criteria. So that's going to be your design speed. Uh, for Hall Road, of course, we're going to be looking at pretty low design speed, pretty tight curves. Uh, the system can be utilized on or has been utilized on wind farm design. And in that case, the minimum horizontal radius is, is determined by the length of the blades that are actually going up to the, to the sides for those wind farms. So that's the kind of thing that you can help configure it so that then the system is producing alignments that are meeting those uh, alignment constraints. And geotechnical and construction unit costs as well. So as I mentioned, it does consider costs very, um, as a very critical component of that. And those unit costs are things such as cost for earthworks, cost for structures, cost for mass haul, uh, things that you would be using uh, when you're doing a detailed design estimate. And it's just calling upon that information a little bit, a little bit earlier on. But like I said, the best part is that it is sensitive to those values and it is considering that when determining your alignment placement. And with a haul road, that could be as simple as your um, compacted material and your bulk earthworks. So, you know, because again, if you can push the material off the side or if you can, you know, use it, uh, drop your material in your borrowing pits and dump sites, then that's all going to influence your alignment placement. So as far as geometric inputs, so, you know, that's going to be based on your design speeds for that, <clears throat> for that whole road. So the example we're going to touch on, I think we looked at about, three, about 35 miles an hour. But you can configure it to whatever whatever design speed you want to utilize. And again, that's really not so much a design speed. It's more the actual elements that go into that. And that's the minimum horizontal radius, the maximum grades, uh, all of those kinds of things that you want to include in the system. Uh, it's also very conducive to sensitivity analyses. So in other words, when we're looking at uh, an analysis, you could say, well, let's look at 12% versus 14%. As you can imagine, you're going to get two different, very different results associated with that and potentially alignments in very different locations because it's able to, to go into areas that it may not be able to. If it's, if we take the 14% example, it may be able to go into areas that obviously it couldn't when it had a restriction of a 12% grade uh, maximum. So that's the, the thing that the system can really assist with. And it's really a fa based around scenario. So in other words, you can do as many as, as many of those different types of examples as you like, and then be able to see what comes out of that. 
And obviously that ties in with your maximum and minimum desired, desired inputs. So we can put in, you know, if I want to stick to my maximum of say 14%, um, or let's say 12%, but I can go up to 14% for a certain section. That's the kind of configurability that you can bring into the system as well. Uh, cost inputs, as I talked about, very important. And, and these are obviously configurable as well. So they're not static. It's not something you just would throw in there for once and then uh, be done with it. You can always you know, update that. If you get a new uh, input from a, your geotech team to say, well, I actually my, you know, my, whole, my whole cost is you know, X number of dollars more than what I've, what I've been defining now, is that going to influence my alignment placement? That's the kind of thing that you can configure with the system. Uh, area cost impacts, of course, structure costs for bridges, if applicable, uh, and then also, of course, different geologies as well. So you can put in different strata, and as the system does go down deeper in cut, that will impact not only the cost of those uh, excavations, but also you can adjust the side slopes based on depth or material as well. So that makes it the that means that the output of the cost for your earthworks, for, for all of the uh, material that is excavating are all assigned a cost and, and side slopes associate, associated to those as well. And then as far as the feature data set, so this is, this is really dependent on your project. And for a whole road, it's going to be as simple as, well, again, depending on your project, potentially, potentially it's just going to be your terrain model versus some, some polygons uh, and maybe some water features. That said, you can add a fair bit of complexity in there. You can bring in GIS or CAD data. You can bring in hydrological data, uh, environmentally sensitive sites, uh, underground utilities, of course. And then, of course, if we have some imagery, we can bring that in as well. So it really does depend on what you have available, and you can certainly bring that in there. But for a whole road, we may maybe something as simple as the terrain model and your engineering design criteria, just to give you an idea, idea of that. So now we're going to touch on the core capability review, and that's really what the system does and how it handles its optimization routines and where it can and how it effectively interacts with the project data that you create. So where does it kind of fit, or how can how does quantum kind of fit into the value engineering workflow, um, either for a whole road or for an existing design? So we're kind of at the planning and feasibility or value value engineering stage. The idea then is you would take that model. Do your optimization with quantum, um, balance your earthworks, make, make sure the alignments are optimal, and then bring that into your into, um, Trimble Business Center for your design and constructible model creation. The idea then is if you wanted to um, feed that out to machine control, you can effectively do rough grading with the alignments that are generated from quantum, uh, certainly from a whole road standpoint. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you can interact with, or that's the, the, the interoperability between quantum and business center, and that's something we'll touch on uh, in, a, in a little little minute as well. Um, we talked about the detailed mass hall planning. So obviously we can do the bulk uh, mass hall you know, balancing with the system, and then you can also do your more detailed analysis within Triple Business Center. So what the system is inherently trying to do it is considering costs and it is actually trying to balance earthworks as well. As you can imagine, that influences cost. The more material you're moving uh, the, you know, throughout the alignment, the greater the impact that's gonna have in your alignment construction cost. So that's one of the things. And then of course, if you wanted to do your more detailed analysis, drop that alignment into business center, do your corridor mass hall. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to do your intelligent compaction and you know, project construction, that's really the, the sort of end goal uh, with, with, that, uh, with that workflow. So with the value engineering methodology and, and by that, you know, what I mean there is that's where you've got an alignment. If you've optimized it, then you can actually create, go into that alignment and manually adjust curves. You can look at your vertical grades. You can look at your horizontal curves, manually adjust them. And one of the things we'll show within the system is the, the ability to actually modify your alignment, have your costs, uh, displayed and your earthworks and then be able to see how that's actually adjusting as you make the modifications to that alignment and by that I mean it's effectively a dynamic update it gives you a cost 
and it lets you say, well, okay, so this alignment is a little bit too close to my one of my void zones. What's going to happen if I shift it into the side of a hill a little bit more? It's going to recalculate your earthworks and it's going to adjust your mass haul. It's not optimizing at that point, but what it's doing is giving you a very rough or a very quick, easy way to say, okay, if I move my alignment here, it's going to blow up my cost potentially by X number of dollars. Now, if I made a major adjustment um, or if I wanted to do a vertical optimization of that alignment, I could do that too. So then it's essentially considering the new information that was provided to you, uh, that it was provided to the system, re-optimizing it, and then giving you its best uh, output from that new modification as well. So we talked about the workflow with, uh, with from Business Center. And again, the idea here is do your analysis within Quantum and then literally take that alignment uh, as an XML, drop it into Business Center, and we'll, we'll, we'll see, show you this in the interface as well. But we'll see what I've actually brought across. And it's quite a detailed um, export uh, or process. And that's just because we want to be able to use the two products in conjunction with each other. Obviously, there's benefits or there's aspects of Business Center that you know, you can do your final fine tuning adjustment of your alignment. You can get do a very detailed earthworks report, um, all of that kind of stuff. If you want to do that within Business Center, but then do your bulk analysis within Quantum. Uh, that's the, the the kind of the workflow there as well. So what's actually brought across, and you can hopefully see in that little screen capture there, we've got the alignment that's been generated from Quantum. We've got the surfaces that are created from Quantum. Um, then what's actually brought across is the horizontal alignment, the vertical profile, the finished surface. Uh, if you have a subgrade, that will be brought across as well. So your top and bottom surfaces and then the existing surface as well. So the little cross section that you can see there is showing exactly what's available. Uh, and again, if you've had, if you had subgrade materials, that will all be brought across as well. And it's literally a drag and drop. Uh, into the system. So that's they're certainly designed to be complementary uh, to, to each other there. So now we're going to get into the actual Hall Road application uh, details. So like I said, the, the idea here is, you know, what's, what's, what's the primary drivers for a Hall Road data set? Uh, typically, it's going to be your digital train model, um, it's going to be your features. It's going to be your, your geometry. So we're just going to touch on each of those and then we'll actually go into the interface and show you how they're being applied. So as far as a terrain model, um, if you, if also, if you saw one of the previous power hours and saw the Stratus one, we can absolutely bring in that Stratus data. Uh, in other words, we can bring it a, a TTM as such. But that said, if you've got a LiDAR based surface, if you've got a USGS DEM, um, you know, if you've got a photogrammetric data, uh, survey surface, uh, you know, or even just a, a, a triangulation based on contours, that's the kind of information that can bring across. And really why it needs that data is for your earthworks calculations, for your crossing constraints, uh, and for all other sort of measurements that it's doing when it's analyzing the, the area. So the capture on the left there is just the sample data that I've uh, gathered. And again, this is a bit of a combination of USGS DEM data and LiDAR-based data. Uh, it's about three foot resolution, so you can bring in pretty high resolution data. Um, and it's also not static as well. So you can say, let's start off on, you know, a higher resolution, sorry, a lower resolution, you know, nine foot DEM that I have. Uh, but if I could go and fly that alignment and bring that in uh, with a three foot DEM, that's the kind of thing that you could bring in, update the analysis. It will update your costs. It will give you more detailed analysis because obviously it's got a, a, a better picture of the terrain model that you're dealing with. So as far as a typical whole road data set. <clears throat> so one of the things uh, I did was, and again, this is based on experience with, with a number of different clients and, um, and for interactions with projects. You know, we looked at different inputs, and this is just an example, uh, one that I created. Uh, so in this case, we're dealing with a maximum of 12% grade, and that's both uphill and downhill. Uh, of course, we can modify that as well. But uh, what we wanted to do was put in the horizontal and um, vertical uh, crest, uh, sorry, radii, um, crest and tag values. 
So again, these are inputs that are based on what you would typically be using. And now again, if you're creating it yourself, you need to be plugging those numbers in uh, and trying to determine an alignment. This is exactly what we're doing with these inputs here is to plug that into the system, let it understand what it needs to create, and then it will use that as part of the optimization. Uh, maximum grades, as I talked about. Um, and then there is also horizontal vertical coordination that's built into the system as well. So things such as trying to minimize your curves on tops of hills. That's a core aspect of the system. And you can specify that uh, if that's a safety issue, if that's some sort of a um, geometric parameter, you can either turn it off or you can actually plug it into the system so that the system is determining alignments that are meeting your constraints. Uh, for, let's see, I'll just open those up there. So as you can see, there's quite a few different inputs in here and you can look at different, different design speed criteria as well. So as I mentioned before, we could put in, uh, you know, say one design speed at 14%, one at 12%, run your analyses, get your results back, and then see the cost impacts of each of those. So you're not, you're not stuck to one particular geometry. Um, by that, you could also have different geometry within, within a single study area. So we can actually define a polygon and say, in this area, I want to stick to my 12%. But in one, one other area, I can go up to 14%. That's the kind of thing that the system can assist with because it will actually consider that. And when the alignment breaches the zones into the higher geometry um, or higher grade, it will apply that. And you will see that in the vertical profile. However, it doesn't apply it if it doesn't need to. It's, it's a pretty sophisticated analysis when it's actually generating those alignments and considering those inputs. So one of the other important things, of course, is going to be your road template. So the good thing with a whole road is it's going to be pretty simple. But of course, you can make it relatively complex if need be as well. Uh, but for my example, we just chose a simple compacted uh, base, uh, which is effectively your finished surface. Um, put a small crown on it. Uh, and then we've got some ditches or berms on either side. So there's quite a fair bit of configurability there. Um, but the main thing here is we're looking for that template because that's what it's using for the bulk earthworks calculations. So at the edge of the, the ditches, that's effectively your hinge point, And that's what it's going to use um, for your side slopes for both fill and for cut. And that's where uh, that it gets that end area calculation. And that's where it uses for the quantities of materials, which can all be exported from each of the environments that are generated from the system. So as far as cost inputs, so we talked about these a little bit. So we can have different costs for excavation and for fill. Uh, we can have different side slides associated with those. And as, as we've already talked about, mass haul is very important with haul roads. If you're trying to find a balance or you may not have a balance, you may have a, it could be a total borrow job. In other words, what you're trying to do then is to minimize the amount of borrow on site. So that may be minimizing fill. So we can certainly configure it for that to try and produce those alignments as well. But in that case, or in this case, normal, in a normal case where you've got a, co a cost for cut, you've got side slopes associated with that. Uh, we can also define a usability percentage and then a compaction factor as well. So all of those are assigned to a particular excavation type so that then when it's actually calculating the quantities of material, and then understanding where that material is going and then if it can be used in embankment and then how much it's gonna cost for excavating the material in the first place, moving it and then actually placing it in your embankment as well. So it's doing all of those calculations and like I said, it's all based on those inputs and you can certainly put in as many different rock types or excavation types as you would like based on either location or by depth as well. So um, as far as the types of materials, so we, we talked about this a little bit. You know, so in other words, we can put in your cut and fill side slopes, the usability percentage. So in other words, when it's excavating that material, how much of it is, is, is usable? Is it one-to-one? -one? So it can actually be used all of it, or let's say 
you know, it, it um, has a percentage that, you know, has to go straight to dump or has to be treated for some reason. That's the kind of thing you can plug into it. Uh, the compaction factor, of course, is so that it understands where that, or how much material it's got to deal with. So if you've got a, um, a bulkage factor, or in other words, when you excavate that material and it expands, then obviously you're going to have more material than when than you first started with. That's that material, or sorry, that quantity, um, or that compaction factor will let the system understand how much material it has to deal with uh, when when placing that throughout the assign throughout the uh, alignment. Uh, retaining wall placement as well. So that's one of the things that, that are certainly important, in, particularly in rugged terrain. So instead of just chasing the slope for uh, with filled slopes or with, with um, sliver, sliver fills or sliver cuts, the system can look at that. It will look at the length of your side slope and say, actually, no, a retaining wall should be placed here. Alternatively, you can actually go in there and say, no, that I want my retaining walls in this area just because the properties of that material uh, are unsuitable for embankment or for cut, and I want to put a retaining wall in there. So there is a fair bit of configurability uh, as well. Other elements, of course. So, you know, let's say there's avoidance areas. Let's say there's, um, you know, environmentally sensitive sites you need to stay out of, or maybe structures or whatever. You can define those as a polygon, or we can import those from CAD, uh, and then literally say to the system, you simply cannot go in here. We have different configurability of that as well. We could say, let's do a total avoidance, let's do a medium priority avoidance or a low priority avoidance. And that will all, all, all influence the alignment placement very differently based on those polygons. And they're all um, very, very configurable based on your project data set. Um, we talked about some of the streams and features or river crossings. So in this case, what we've done for the project data set they're actually potentially uh, dump sites. So what we've done is define them in, as, as a feature and that's where an opportunity where they can push the material off the side at those locations. Uh, that could also be defined as a bridge crossing or a structure crossing, either a culvert or some sort of a crossing uh, over that feature with a clearance. So you certainly can configure that too. Uh, and like I said, they can also be borrow pits or dump sites uh, that it will actually absolutely influence alignment placement because it understands that it can move material to those locations versus say the start and finish point. <clears throat> so what's the outputs? So we're going to have a look at these when we jump into the interface as well. But ultimately, when we look at an alignment, we're going to get a mass hall profile, we're going to get our vertical profile, we're going to get our horizontal alignment, all of our earthworks and all of the cost associated with that. Uh, it's a pretty detailed breakdown, and it's based on again all of the particulars of that of that scenario. So uh, the and by that it's calculating your earthworks based on the template and the end area calculation, and then that's what it's using for your both fill and for cut quantities, and then also the um, the costs associated with each of those, and then of course the mass hall, and then we also have uh, structures if applicable. And footprint area, things like, you know, if you had uh, sites that had an extra cost associated with them, that's the kind of thing that the system can assist with. And it will also give you a percentage breakdown of what's, what's the, you know, what's the main driver in my alignment? Is it my fill? Is it my cut? Is it my mass hall? Uh, is it my structures? You've got a very, very quick and easy way of seeing what that alignment is uh, going to look like from a cost standpoint and then how it's going to impact my alignment placement. So here's just to give you an idea of you know what what the outputs are, and again this is a little example where we just ran some analyses, um, and you know through some some um, borrow pits and dump sites, we got some costs out of the out of the system. Uh, you can see if you can see some of those numbers, it's pretty good at trying to balance earthworks where possible. Obviously that may not be applicable to all projects, but ideally if it does, uh, it will. And that's because, as you can imagine, that's minimizing the movement of material. We don't have big areas of fill or from cut that you know we may need to consider um, or need to waste. It's trying to find areas where it can minimize that mass haul and generate alignments that are all balanced that have that have minimized impacts on on those inputs as well. There is a 3D visualization tool that's built into the technology as well. <clears throat> so very quickly, <clears throat> you can easily see 
you know, what my side slopes are going to look like, <clears throat> um, where my alignments are, um, where the cuts and fills are from a 3D, <clears throat> 3D standpoint. And uh, there we go. So, um, <clears throat> and like I said, that visualization is built into the tool as well. Uh, and that can easily be shared to others as well. There is a viewer that lets you look at an alignment. Uh, you don't need a license or anything like that, but it lets you very quickly look at a, an alignment, both in horizontal, uh, vertical, and of course, using the 3D visualization tool. So what's the end goal? Of course, it's gonna be something like this. This is a potentially a hall road that was generated with quantum in, within a mine. So as you can imagine for a very dynamic envi environment where you've got a, um, you know, an alignment you need to get balanced as quickly and easily as possible. Um, you, you just don't, you, you really just need to send the machines along to actually compact it as well. But in this case, we've got a pretty basic template. As you can see there, there's some safety berms, uh, but that's based on a quantum alignment. And that's really what the system can assist with. And in this case, there's obviously some pretty large culverts that are being generated from from that. So what we're going to do now is jump into the actual system itself and see the interface. So let's make sure I can switch to that. Okay, so here we're looking at a, a pretty similar example. Um, we have the digital terrain model that we've talked about, uh, which I said is, a, is a based on a three foot LiDAR based surface. We've got some imagery in the background. Um, and I've actually ran an analysis, and these are uh, about sort of 20,000 feet in length, I guess. Uh, yeah, 24,000 feet. Uh, gives you a cost here um, of my quantities and materials. Now, I, I'm just looking at a single alignment. But if I look over here, we have a breakdown. So one of the things that the system does do is, is not to give you just a single alignment. Of course, you can always pick out one alignment, but the idea, particularly in this case, is to give you a range of alternatives across the study area. And by that, we could say, well, um, you know, if I look at my, some of my alignments down here over to the, um, to the east, you know, they, they may be avoiding some areas in here that are, you know, maybe things you just want to stay away from. Um, but that said, it could be more cost effective to go through those areas. And that's actually what we're looking at here. It's pretty common sense because they're, they're shorter alignments. But however, my red alignment out here, although it may be longer, um, it may be avoiding a whole swath of other issues. So the idea here is to give you a range of alternatives to, to, to consider and say, okay, this alignment's great, this one's not, or you know, let's pick between you know, an east and a west and then provide those options to the owner and say, okay, this is what we, would, you know, this, this is what we believe are the two optimal alignments and see what, see what the system can, we'll see what, see what you believe is, is a better alignment. The point being for each alternative that it creates, uh, as you can see down here in my cross section, it's actually using that template that we created. So pretty basic as, 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 as we saw when we throw those, threw those inputs into the system. Um, if I now go and um, turn on my mass hall profile, if you've ever seen a mass hall profile, um, that's exactly what the system is generating. But you can also see here we have dump sites where anywhere the alignment has crossed over those zones, it understands that it can dump the material there. So what that's doing is assisting with balancing earthworks. But the best part is that it's helping you to try and balance those earthworks throughout the alignment itself. And it's letting you look at the um, earthworks quantities throughout the entire alignment. So there's a fair bit of detail you can drill into. So if I look at my source here, I can bring that up. So this is actually now broken down by station <clears throat> and it shows me exactly where my cut material is coming from. So I've got my quantities of material. I have all of my inputs, or sorry, the um, calculation, calculated quantities by station. And very quickly, I can go in to drill down into a fair bit of detail and see where this, you know, at this, at this station, how much cut I have at that point. And conversely, I can do the exact same thing for um, my fill and see exactly what's happening there as well. So again, if you're using a spreadsheet or if you're used to using a spreadsheet for balancing earthworks, this is where the system can help significantly because it's giving you all of those numbers 
and very quickly look, look giving the opportunity to do that but it's also optimizing based on those numbers too these are where it's inherently trying to balance that earthworks number and where it's trying to minimize that mass haul so let's say we wanted to consider one of these alignments in a little bit more detail um, and or you know if we wanted to do some of the value engineering that we touched on earlier on so again i can actually look at one of my editable alignments um, it's now a true uh, geometric alignment as such and then i can actually go and modify curves so let's say uh, let's move in over here um, let's say you know obviously we if you can see here this is clearly my minimum horizontal radius and actually if we're looking at that um, i think with minimum horizontal radius is about uh, 115 feet so what that's saying is obviously it's applying that it's put in a switchback so obviously for for rugged terrain as you can see there's a lot of value in being able to consider you can do this manually of course but being able to let the system do that uh, over its um uh, you, as part of its optimization there's a lot of value there so um what i can also then do is let's say for instance you know i wanted to move this curve and just see what it looked like over here okay so what it's actually done let me single out that alignment so what it's actually gone and done now is it's recalculated my costs it's given me my um, new profile for that section and if you noticed over here it did change the cost as well so that's one of the core benefits of the system is to generate an optimal alignment but to very very quickly let you see what that alignment cost is going to look like by making those little smaller modifications so you know if you can imagine there's a fair bit of value in that so the 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 methodology that we recommend is to do your bulk analysis for a, for for a project like this let it optimize do as many you know optimizations as you like pick an alignment that you think is optimal or at least you know maybe 95 percent of the way there and then you can actually go in and fine tune it and these are all my horizontal pis so it is a true geometric alignment <clears throat> and of course i can modify those i can delete pis i can add pis make changes the best part is of course at all times i've always been able i'm always able to keep an eye on that cost so if I do something that is significant for the alignment and it completely blows out my cost, then obviously that's not, that's something where we may need to, you know, as a as a project owner or as a contractor, you might want to say, well, actually, we can't move this alignment too far because if we do that, it's going to blow out our cost. That's the kind of approach that, that the system can really assist with. So let's say we're then happy with our alignment. <clears throat> um, we talked about the workflow with, with uh, business sector. So what I would then do is export that alignment or simply drag and drop that alignment into Business Center. And let's flick over to Business Center. There we are. And as I mentioned, what's brought across? So we have our surfaces, we have our <clears throat> construction surface, we have the, the, the complete surface, and then the land. So construction is literally just your uh, road template. And again, all of those, because you have those surfaces now, as you can imagine, we can actually then go and do more detailed earthworks reports just from Business Center as well. But just looking at this profile, I can see now I've got my finished surface. You can see obviously the existing, I can see a little ditch here. And again, these side slopes are based on the parameters that we used within the system. So I just did a, um, a cross section here, but all of those inputs. So as you can see, this is you know in, in essence you could almost use this for rough grading and the idea here is that you do your bulk on the bulk and earthworks balance earthworks balancing and optimization with quantum drop it into business center make your minor adjustments and if need be of course um you know you've got a pretty close to a constructible model obviously this doesn't that's not the same for a highway model but for a hall road model where you don't need to do that much um detailed analysis then that's that's a pretty pretty slick workflow uh, if you just needed those earthworks quantities, of course, you can reflect back to quantum. We can just export all of the inputs that we've just shown here as a report. We can export them as a CSV. There's a fair bit of detail that we can export from that alignment. And it's also doing that for each individual alignment as well. So I could scroll to my next alignment. I could then look at my numbers here. 
I could then make my adjustments and then export that again and bring that drop that literally into Business Center as well. So, <clears throat> um, and because it's a LAN XML format that's exporting it, of course, you could bring that into um, any other package as well. Obviously, uh, you know, it's a pretty, pretty slick interface into to Business Center. Uh, and again, if you wanted to make modifications within Business Center, we could then re-export that as a LAN XML, bring it back into the system, and then that's going to give you a pretty detailed cost of those modifications uh, that you'd made there as well. So um, that's really the, the workflow. And from a whole road optimization standpoint, you know, you could literally just plug in my start and finish points, uh, run your analysis, and then you're going to get a range of alternatives. Um, as far as processing times, it really depends on the length of the alignment and then the actual complexity of the project. Uh, for these ones, we're, I think we're roughly taking about 20 to 30 minutes. So the benefit of, if you can understand the benefit of that, we can look at multiple start and finish points. I could here I have my start point down here, I have my finish point over here on the top of the hill here. Uh, but again, I could have moved that over to the eastern side or whatever. So it lets you very quickly look at many different options and get costs associated with those, get optimal inputs based on each of those, uh, and then be able to you know, drop those into Business Center and do your final detailed analyses there. So there's a fair bit of configurability with all of those inputs as we talked about. Uh, the polygons that we're looking at here are avoidance zones. So these are areas that you simply must stay away from. But there's a lot of configurability with those as well. Um, I can simply go in here and I could say it's an avoidance area, it's a crossing zone. In other words, you know, an area I need to keep a minimum elevation of, above. Um, I could put a geometric zone in there. Uh, I could put in a, um, you know, a pond or something like that. You need to either cross over with a structure or place a culvert. So there's a fair bit of information you can define with those with those zones, uh, and they could be either defined within the system, or actually created from um, or in, sorry uh, imported from a GIS or CAD data set. It's a pretty straightforward process there uh, for any of those data sets. So the, probably the last little thing I wanted to touch on um, is we talked about refinements of existing alignments. Or let's say, for instance, you had an existing alignment that you wanted to modify or you wanted to do a realignment of. One thing that, let's say you had a 2D conceptual alignment from with a cost per mile for your whole road. Uh, what, you know, in that case, you don't have vertical geometry. So there's a number of different ways we can handle that. We could import the alignment as a 2D, drape it on the surface and then run a vertical optimization. Or alternatively, and actually, if we did that vertical optimization, what it would then do is apply the vertical geometry of that scenario to that alignment as best as it could, and then give it a cost. Alternatively, you could say, well, actually, I know a rough idea where that alignment, uh, where my whole road should go, and I've got my rough 2D alignment. I import that into the system again. We then have the ability to do what we call a seeded submission. And this is where I can pick an alignment I can then specify if I want to modify the PIs or if I want to let it let it um, do whatever it wants with those PIs. I and by that I mean, you know, delete PIs, add PIs, move PIs around. And what it will then do is actually take that alignment and optimize it both horizontally and vertically, and try to better optimize that that existing alignment that you have. So there's. As you can see, there's a benefit of doing that because you can actually say, well, I want the alignment in this area, but I don't have an, I simply don't have time to optimize an alignment or I simply don't have time to look at the earthworks. You can throw that into the system, optimize it. It will give you that cost estimate output and then obviously try to minimize all of your construction costs. It will try to balance your earthworks as best it can um, within that alignment. And then as you saw before, because we can go and fine tune that alignment, you've got that ability to, you know, to really make sure the alignment is precisely where you want it to be, but also have the smarts built into it from the quantum analysis as well. And like I said, then you would potentially drop that into Business Center, get your final Earthworks report from that, um, look at the surfaces, make modifications to those. That's the kind of workflow that you can do uh, with your particular, particular alignments. 
So um, I realise we're getting closer towards the end of the hour. So hopefully that's probably enough time to allow for any questions there. But uh, that's really hopefully giving you a high level overview of the quantum technology and its and it specifically its specific applications for Hall Roads. Uh, we do have a number of clients using it for that uh, particular purpose uh, for, with a lot of success. So we certainly hope that this has given you an eye, open your eyes to this type of application of the technology um, for, for, for Hall Road applications. Uh, Nick, I guess is that time to hand it over to you? Can you hear me? Test, test. There we go. Yep. All right. <laughs> Always a thing. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Adrian. I appreciate it. We do have a question that came in. Um, I may miss this at the start, but does Quantum have the capabilities for tunnel alignments? How is that handled? So it does consider tunnels. Um, so when you actually define a, a cost for excavation, it does consider both the side slopes and depth of that cut, and then it will calculate the cost associated with that. And if there is a, you actually do define, let me bring it up, there is an option here for a tunnel cost. So you define a portal cost, an area that it's dealing with. So in other words, how much tunnel debris is extracted from that. Um, if it's single or double bore, we can put in a minimum and maximum length of those tunnels. But inherently what it's doing, <clears throat> is looking at the cost of excavating material and then it will look at the cost of tunnel uh, as well so what happens then you get to a point where it will you know say calculate in bulk earth earthworks for excavation and then it may get to a point where actually no it's more economically feasible to place a tunnel and again that's purely based on the cost that we're defining here so here we're saying we just put a sample of fifteen thousand dollars per, per linear foot and what it will then do is actually say, well, in this case, um, no, it's cheaper to place a tunnel. Uh, and in that case, then it would place a structure instead of a, of a deep cut. Alternatively, that may impact alignment placement as well. So let's say we had a, you know, as, as tunnels, as we know, are expensive, and we put that cost in there. It may actually deter alignment from going into a particular area because that will actually require tunnel placement. So you, you will end up potentially with options. If we ran this type of analysis, we may end up with some options that had tunnels and some that did not. And that's because its goal is to give you a range of alternatives across the study area um, based on those cost inputs. So long, uh, long story short, absolutely, yes, tunnels are considered and they are based on cost and they, they can be quite detailed as well as far as the cost inputs associated with them. Um, the other question that we had come in, um, I think it'd be best handled by just kind of giving an overview. When you were talking about in the beginning um, of the data being processed and it going through Trimble servers, can you can you speak a little bit on how uh, Quantum is handling the processing? Does it have to go through servers? Can it be on a local based system? Um, that type of that type of question. Sure. So there's there's actually two different ways of handling that. So what we're looking at here is the quantum desktop uh, technology, which is simply a standalone license, much like a Trimble Business Center license. So uh, it is a 12 month subscription uh, model and you effectively have full access for those 12 months, but you do the processing on your own computer. So uh, any of the number crunching, all of that kind of thing is done on your computer. And if it's running Trimble Business Center, then it's probably going to be good enough for quantum as well. Obviously, the stronger the computer or the stronger the processor, the faster the processing times will be. And it is multi-core aware, so it will certainly utilize, um, if you've got maximum number of cores, it will uh, use all of those cores um, and you can configure that as well. So uh, that's the quantum desktop. So um, there is also uh, professional services where it does access our servers. So we actually do the processing on our servers and that's literally where we go and we work with your team. Uh, we assist you with your alignments. Uh, we don't make any decisions on the alignments, but we actually provide outputs to the, um, from the system. So it's, a, it's essentially a, um, almost like a consulting type aspect where we do assist with your alignments, um, but do provide you outputs uh, based on that. So 
but like I said, if you just wanted to run it yourself, uh, you literally purchase the license, much like a TBC license, uh, and then you can um, you can do the processing all on your own computer, your own your own um, PCs. Awesome. Okay. Um, are you guys seeing my presentation? Because I just switched over. Yep. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So thank you very much. I appreciate your presentation. Um, thank you for joining us, Adrian, today. That was very informative. Mm -hmm. um, have some resources that I want to go over and leave you guys with and uh, give you guys an idea of what we are going to be seeing um, next uh, next month. Um, first off, if you guys have any or want any more additional information on the quantum product, uh, you can go to construction.trimble.com under products and solutions. You'll find quantum uh, where you can find the quantum web pages, uh, features and benefits and software integrations. Um, while you're there, please also visit the TVC web pages. Um, Again, on the construction.trimble.com products and solutions, this time Trimble Business Center as opposed to Quantum. Um, you can see our latest webinars that we have posted there, customer success stories, uh, bulletins, white pages, and this is where you can download um, your business center software as well as um, request 30-day codes, which uh, we now have a new automated process to speed, speed that along. Um, for you guys to obtain uh, obtain your software demos. Um, once you do get your demo going uh, or just need to do some continuing education, we have information on the, our YouTube pages, uh, youtube.com slash user TBC survey and Trimble B, uh, help BCHCE. Um, we run uh, power hours really throughout the month, especially during this COVID time. There's been more and more um, um, presentations that have been online. So do watch the news feed or go to the forums, which is the community pages, happens to be the next slide here, um, that have postings for, for these type of things that uh, we are showing. You could also get hints, tips, tricks, or just top, talk to uh, developers or peers out there that have your same issues um, and find out the best workflow solution for you. We also have uh, on the community pages, the TBC macros. Uh, this is a great, a great way to reduce a bunch of clicks in a workflow down to very few clicks. Um, do go online to explore these macros. Uh, we have a very, a lot, a lot of Trimble macros out there as well as other companies who are um, producing their own macros that integrate directly with the software. For those do-it-yourselfers to continue your education, you could go to the Trimble Library. Um, it's an online platform where we have videos, tutorials, different guides. You can have it uh, go directly to your computer or your desktop, or you can download the app directly to your phone. So when you're in the field, uh, you can see what's going on. And then last, last month, we had uh, Trimble Stratus do a presentation for us. Uh, so I thought I would just remind people where to go to get information about Trimble Stat Stratus. Again, construction.trimble.com. Go to the software solutions, and you'll be able to access any information about Trimble Stratus on there. If you got uh, the next steps in order to get uh, any type of information, go through your local site tech. Um, there is a link on there of uh, where your closest dealer is or just basically do a Google search for your area and closest SciTech seems to work very, very well. Our next power hour, uh, Alan Sharp will be joining us um, and giving us an update on all the Trimble macros that he has been working on since the last time we um, had a presentation from him, which I believe was in January. So he's come out with a, real, a lot of nice, uh, really, really good macros for all of the new releases, specifically ones ones that um, deal with uh, road road estim estimating based off of importing the sheets from a or sheet data from a PDF directly. Uh, thank you guys all for coming. I very much appreciate your guys' attendance, and uh, see you next time.